Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And we are continuing on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. We are on the free motion quilting of it all. So I'm trying to learn how to free motion quilt. And that's where you can quilt in all different directions. We're trying meandering. We're trying a whole sorts of things. Last night we actually stitched a little froggy and that's kind of, that's where we left off last night because we ran out of bobbin. So I got some more bobbin thread in. I thought we could, uh, we have like two little more V's to go on that, on that row. And I thought we could, do some more animals or something, just play around. And then I have an idea for the row after that that I want to try. And so we'll we'll go over that. We actually have to flip our quilt around because then we will we're in the home stretch now. We're past after um after we get this last little bit done, we'll be past the halfway uh, center point on the quilt. So Whew, that feels awesome. <laughs> so thanks again for joining me, uh, guys. Uh, if, if you guys were trying to get last night's video, it did not get up onto YouTube. It wasn't recording correctly. So uh, the replay for yes, last night's will be in Facebook here. Uh, but we'll, get, we'll try and get this one up on YouTube tonight. So thank you, guys. All right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's see where we left off last night and get the quilt back in the machine. Here we are, it's so bright and fun. So my Splendid Sampler 2 quilt is gonna be totally the opposite of this. For that one, we're going for, um, we're going for, oh gosh, I'm realizing something here. So guys, we're going for like just pale colors, but look, it looks like I forgot some in this row too, okay. So we must have run out of bobbin before, cause Here's where we left off yesterday. Like I did, did a little froggy with glasses here. So we ran out of bobbin thread there. So we have this little bit to do here, but I'm realizing we must have ran out of bobbin on the row before because this is not stitched either. We're kind of stopping in the exact same spot with a little tulip. <laughs> And then there's nothing underneath there. So we kind of have to get both of these little bits done, don't we? All right, well, that's fine. We can we can play for a little bit on these on these two. And then we'll move on to the, the next row. But yeah, I have no stitching in there. Well, good. I'm glad we caught that now. Um, so I'll I'll start on in this row. And then we'll come back the other way for for this row. So we have one, two, we have two and a half. Uh, little V's and then two and a half little V's going this way as well. So, all right, I'm going to get this in the machine. So I did put a new bobbin in. I'm out of all the red and maroon thread. So now we are, I, I switched to brown. <laughs> so we're, we're working through our our thread, and it, we're actually, this top thread, this blue, I'm almost out of that as well. So that's making me really happy. I'm, I'm, I was trying to get through a whole uh, bunch of thread that I just happened to have, and uh, it feels just really good once I use up one of those, use it up a, a, a spool. It's making me feel good. All right, let's uh, get our thread. So I'm just going backwards here for a stitch and then pulling up. That should catch the bobbin thread. Oop, I don't think I went quite far enough. There we go. And I should be able to pull the bobbin thread up. There we go. So there, there you can see the brown pop up. So I'm gonna just grab my scissors. Scissors probably isn't the best tool for this, but it's pointy and that's what I have available here. So, all right, both threads are up. Gonna get them both underneath the presser foot. And let's just give it a couple of little stitches there. All right, now I'm gonna grab my, my grip it and my glove here. That's been working well for me. And uh, what should we do? We, uh, oh, I, I don't think we ran out of bobbin thread here. I think we were just having just bobbin issues where the bo the top thread was coming up a little bit too much. Um, but 
I don't know. Let's just start with some some squiggles and some hearts. That's kind of where we were yesterday, and I think that'll be a nice little mini warm up. But I'd love to do love love to play around with these last two little um, two and a half bits on these two rows. We're gonna add some wiggles in here. And I'll add a heart, cause that was kind of fun to do yesterday. So we did a little ruler work yesterday and we talked about, oh, what is it? Is it Westerly, the Westerly? Um, Westerly presser feet, and uh, let me know if I'm wrong on that. And uh, the uh, rulers, I did put a link to it in this Facebook post. I, th I think I might order one of those presser feet. So the difference between that presser foot and mine is that it's thicker. So if you butt up a ruler against it, it's not going to slide underneath. And it's like a perfect half inch circle so that when you're stitching right in the middle, it'll be a quarter inch all the way around. They're looking kind of awesome. And they have them for high shank and uh, low shank machines. And kind of like a oh, westerly. Westerly. Did I say that wrong? Okay, westerly. And I'm, I'm tempted to get one. So... Oh man, the Amazon Alexa is talking to me for some reason, I think. It's because whenever I say echo now with, with this quilting, <laughs> she starts talking. All right, I'm feeling really good with these meanders and wiggles, um, spirals today. So that's, that's kind of nice. Maybe it is just some practice and muscle memory. Pam, you're doing some free motion loops and stars. Oh, stars! We, we were going to do that last last night. Um, let's let's try some of those. Let me think about that. All right, I could do it where I just do the outlines, or I could do um, the where you go like all all crossover. You, Pam, you have several several Westerly products, very nice quality. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, the presser feet. I mean, it's pricey. It's like forty five dollars or something like that for the presser foot, but man, if you're doing a lot of quilting, it seems like it might be a nice, nice deal. And I think you get a curved ruler um, with it to start. Uh, so I don't know. Um, it's an Australian company. So I don't know, maybe that's why it's a little bit more expensive here in the US. Or it looks like an Australian company. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. But um, the website was, uh, the website was, you know, dot com dot au. Okay, so yep, with the starter set. So okay, so yeah, with the starter set, you you get the presser foot, which is this little bit, and then you get um, you get a ruler with it too. All right, let's let's add a big old star. So we're gonna cross like that and we got a star see that so then we can just uh, swirl off of it a little bit add a little wiggle up in there a little wiggles around it oh wow that really does look patriotic when you add these little spirals with them um, with the, the star that's kind of cute All right, I'm gonna do one without crossing through now. Um, we'll just draw the shape of it. Let me think. All right, now we're gonna go this way. This one's gonna be a little wonky one, which I kind of like with stars. <laughs> oh my God, my tongue is totally sticking out again. I'm a crazy person. All right, and then back up. <laughs> There's my wonky star. He's got a little little arm going down that way. Oh, they won a reality show for new inventions in uh, new inventors in Australia. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. I didn't know that at all. Uh, 
Pam. I'm going to have to look into the, them some more. Are we still talking about the westerly thing? I, I might have, I might have missed where the conversation's going. All right, we're going to try another star. I just want to get up in here. We're gonna, we're gonna, we don't have a lot of wiggle room to get out, but that's okay. You know, I find these meandering, meandering much more freeing when you can add a loop every once in a while. Um, then I feel like I'm not as restricted. All right, we're going to do a big star right here. I'm doing a goofy, wonky one again, where I don't draw the middle lines. I think those are kind of cute. There we go. And then we'll add squiggles around it. So I might, I might, uh, I might invest in one of those presser feet. It is my birthday on Friday, so <laughs> that might have to be a little birthday present. All right, I'm, I'm liking these stars. I'm going to do one where we cross over again. Man, you can cover a lot of space with these, these stars really quickly, which is kind of fun. There we go, another little star. And the nice thing with stars, actually the really nice thing with stars is that you you end up where you started, so you can continue to fill in. Oh, thanks, Jean. <laughs> You guys, let me know. Let me know if you guys are still talking about the westerly thing, because um, just to make sure that I didn't miss the conversation. Because if they're doing Facebook videos and stuff like that, and I, I would like to make sure that I follow them. The beginning of this. I suppose we should add a little star down here too. Okay, so all right, so I will I'll check out their Facebook page then and stuff too cuz I'd I'd love to check out their videos if they're doing doing that and get some good lessons in there. That'd be nice. All right, we have squiggled our way to the bottom here. All right, I think that's enough squiggles. Let's uh, let's uh, move over to our next little bit here. Luckily, we don't have to go far. Uh, scissors. Okay. So, since we're at the bottom, let's go up instead, since we haven't tried that in a while. Um, oop, let's not skip our row. Here we go. So this is the row with the frog, so we just have to go up two and a half. So what should we do here? I like the squiggles and the stars. Oh, let me show you guys, show you guys the squiggles and the stars that we just did. So, uh, um, got some little stars. Oh, he's pretty wonky. Uh, but there you go, like a star where you cross over and then you just can kind of continue where you left off. And then I did some wonky ones where I, I didn't cross over. I just made like five little feet. <laughs> I think that was kind of fun. Oh, the majority of their videos are on YouTube. I'll, I'll check them out there too. Oh, and then here's, here's I think the first little star. Oh, there's a really, really wonky one. Hidden little stars. That's cute. I like that idea. Yeah, those are fun. I like, I like, um, I like those straight line things that end up where where you started. That was that was a 
That was a good warm up, I think. All right, what now? We have uh, two little V's, two and a half little V's that we can play around with. And then I have an idea of what I want to do on um, the next one, and I'll talk about that next. We'll definitely have time for that yet. Let's, uh, ooh, flowers. We did a little flowers, but I kind of, I didn't, oh, you know what? Let's do those flowers where we echo the flowers again. Those were looking pretty cute, and I've been thinking about them ever since. So why don't we try, we'll try doing that. And I was thinking, man, some other flowers would be really cute. Like um, Queen Anne's Lace would just be like a bunch of little balls on it. And um, like you, we could actually play with actual flowers and, and give that a go. Oh, did I not? Oh, I thought I just brought up. Oh, I did. Okay, here it is. Thought I brought up thread already. Couldn't find it. All right. The trouble with the flowers was getting in and out of them. So we were trying circles, and then I was doing flower petals, and then like echoing them a little bit. We could try that, and maybe adding a leaf here and there. We'll just go in and out. Um, you know what? I'm gonna. How about this? I'm just not gonna worry how I get in and out of these things, and we'll have weird crossovers. And that's just something I'm gonna have to learn how to do along the line here. All right, let me think this through though. How do I get in it to start? You know, we could start with a leaf because we're we're in this corner here. So we could go like this, and then leaf back, and then be in a center. That's what we're doing. All right, watch this. Center of the leaf. And we'll have a leaf come this way. You know, this doesn't matter much. It's going to be covered with binding, but fun to play around. All right. Now we'll, we'll go a little farther and do the circle for the center. My tongue is out and I'm in like total concentration mode. I can't even speak. All right, and then echoing it because I thought that was just really like a fun little way to make these more decorative. A Westerly started in March 2008 in Victoria, Australia. They do have a YouTube videos. Australian dollar, they'll be cheaper in the US. Oh, with the conversion rate. Oh, well, but then I'm sure you make up with it with shipping. But yeah, I'll have to look into it because I, I do like the concept of of those with the um, with the fat presser foot. I mean, that's just kind of cool, right? Is there any downside to a thick presser foot like that? Let me know if there's any of you that don't like something like that. All right, I'm only going to go this far because we're going to run off the side here. I suppose we could just come off of here with like another leaf. And then maybe, I don't know, another stem type thing. Let's, let's turn this into a leaf too. Because I want to try a different flower next. All right, so we got a cute little flower going in. All right, now what should we do? I kind of want to try another flower. I want to try, let's try one that has like a stem with some petals that come off of it. Um, here, let me let me try something. So we'll have the stem come up here, and then it's got that little bit of flower bottom. And you know what, I'm just gonna add a little leaf here while I'm at it. We didn't really need to go down that side, but let's come back up and add a leaf on this side. We're just doodling. Doodling, doodling. And now I want um, a whole pile of really skinny petals to come off of this one. We're doing like thread painting.
there. See, that's kind of cute. But again, how do we get out of it? I suppose we just come down and start up another stem sort of thing. This one can have like a tulip leaf coming up. This one will be like a little daisy. How about that? So Steady sells them in the U.S. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll have to take a look at them. Oh, I, I missed it if any of you guys said uh, um, if, you didn't, if you didn't like them for some reason. I'm going outside. Outside the Chevron again. <laughs> I did that yesterday and I kind of think it's fun. I broke the line. All right, we're doing rando flowers here. I'm not filling it in at all. We're just kind of, we're just kind of doodling flowers. Maybe I should do some, you know, fill in the space, uh, space ones like that. Their presser foot is still is your go-to now. Okay, Pam, you're using it now for free motion. Um, so if you want to switch between free, free motion and roller work, you don't have to change. Okay, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't diminish like visibility or anything like that. I guess maybe that's what I'd be afraid of. All right, we're just gonna get out of here. With some squiggles, I guess. All right, let's do one of those flowers in the middle. It does a bit, so it does, um, it does uh, reduce visibility just a hair or a little bit. Well, I suppose, you know, they say with free motion quilting that you're supposed to kind of look ahead of you a little bit. Is that, I don't know. I feel like I've heard that before. Let's do a, let's just keep adding to this circle. We'll have a big circle inside of this flower and then fat little petals. How about that? All right, I want to end up here, so let's start there. Fat little petals. Oops, we're doing six. <laughs> we'll, re we'll repeat them. That was kind of fun last time. And it fills in more space. There, that's fun. Oh, you usually have your eyes closed, so visibility isn't an issue. Nice. <laughs> oh, thanks, Gina. I'm I'm excited. I think you know now that I got the machine cleaned up. You know, I I I honestly think changing the belt, the sewing machine belt in this machine has made a huge difference. You know, and honestly, I'm just kind of feeling it today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if it's not working one day, I like I like these little flowers. If it's not working one day, then just chill out and do it a different day, I suppose. All right, we got one, two, three little dudes to make it up to that frog. So again, I don't know how to get out of these flowers. I'm gonna have to look at examples of people who, who are doing flowers on how they get in and out of them. That's still the free motion mystery for sure. For me is people getting in and out of their shapes. And whenever I'm looking it up, it's always so clever. So um, I'll have to I'll have to play around with that a little bit more. R research, research that a little bit more. Like the next, what I want to do on the next, um, the next row, I would have never thought of this way of how to get it in and out of it. And, and I'll show you that um, once we get over there. 
But for the next row, I'm going to do one where I go all the way up and then I have to come all the way down for, for the design. I think, um, and I'm, I'm kind of excited to do that because we haven't done that yet. We've just kind of done whatever to fill the space as we go. We haven't tried a design that you have to go all the way down and back up. Ooh, and my my uh, bobbin thread is coming up a little bit again. But I don't know, I've read that's kind of just your speed and how you're going. So I don't know, maybe I just gotta pay attention to that a little bit more again. We're just gonna push through. Man, it really shows up on this light color, doesn't it? Have I tried clamshells yet? No! So, clamshells. Oh, like kind of how we did for the Splendid Sampler 2, like that shape. I have not... I'm not even sure I would know how to do that. Um... Do you have to overlap something? Oh wait, no. You would just you would just kind of go one way like this, and then kind of hit the centers, or you'd have to come up a little and hit the centers. I think I kind of get what you're saying. All right, we're gonna do one other thing. Um, there's one that I for sure want to do, and we're gonna do that next. Uh, and it should it should be one where we cover a big distance all at once. But I've always liked it. I want to give it a try. And I know it has a name, um, but I don't, I don't remember. So I'm sure um, someone here might, might know what it's called. But we'll get there in two seconds. Oh, it is in the book. Oh, I'm gonna have to look again. The clamshells. When doing a Christmas quilt, you can do the loops. Oh, like Christmas lights. Oh, see, that's so sweet. I like that idea. These loops could be extended for Christmas lights. So I should. I should be able to turn these loops into flowers, shouldn't I? Let's let's see if I can figure that out quick. Ah, I'm stuck. Ooh, I got just really goofy here all of a sudden. Yeah, just like how we were doing those flowers, or those hearts the other day, we should just be able to do a little flower, but... Um, we're getting kind of stuck in the machine here, so I'm just going to finish it up. I'm going to just leave the frog like that. I'm not going to fill in the shapes around it. Ooh, it's feeling like awfully slippery and weird. That's okay. All right, and we're just gonna end it there. So this was kind of maybe a weird, I probably should have started up at the top and then worked my way down so I didn't end up in nowhere, but you know, like anyone's gonna notice that <laughs> uh, with the rest of this quilt. So, all right, let's, let's just pop it out here. I'm gonna snip right there. And then we gotta get that we got to get that bobbin thread to snipped. So in theory, you want to start, you want to like ideally end at an edge. That'd be a lot easier than ending in the middle here. Okay. Ooh, but I love the flowers. I would definitely like to pursue uh, flowers a little bit more. Just um, here's, uh, here's what I got for those just to kind of figure them out a little bit more. Like, I, I need a good way to connect them. Like, I know there's ways. People people do a good job at it, but <laughs> I kind of like these. It's just like, it's like doodling. All right, cool. So, all right, the next, the next row, and, and we'll just start it down at the bottom here because we're at the bottom. Um, 
So I would like, I have this other quilting book, and my mom's on here now, so she's going to see that I have this, but I, I, I am borrowing this from mom's library. <laughs> so this is um, an older quilting book that, I, that I've read through too, and I wanted to try these um, continuous curve things. So this is where it looks like you have like these little neat boxes that have been uh, put these little curves in but how you do it is you go one whole row and you'd bloop down and a, across bloop down across bloop down across bloop down across and then when you come back the other side you add the final little bloops to it to make to make your square so <laughs> mom's fuming me because I stole her stuff so here we go like this where you do a little bit and then you come back the the other way. So I want to try I want to try that because I think it would work really well with uh, these uh, squares in the quilt. Is that what it's called? Squares in the quilt. This design I know I've seen this design a million times before, but I don't I don't know what it's called. But I thought we could get like two in each of these, like split. You know, so like here, if we divide this in half, we could just es we could just estimate the half. So you know, it'd be from here, we'd go bloop, and then down to the other middle, and then back up, and then bloop, and then down to the middle, and then up, bloop down to the middle, and then we'd come back the other way and finish off all the bloops. Um, I thought we could give that a go. I think it's kind of cool looking. And it would give us give me a little bit of practice on um, just like doing a, a decent arc. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like an decent a decent like aiming for a point and doing a pretty arc to that point, and um, and then back. Oh yeah, like a cathedral window quilt. And you know what? I'm gonna rotate this quilt 180 degrees too because now we are past the halfway point and now instead of adding bulk to my machine in the in the neck here now we get to start getting rid of it which is awesome so I just rotated this I'm gonna still start from the bottom because why not but now I will gradually have less and less bulk in the machine here oh but we are kind of we're reversed a little bit. Now I'm going this way. Okay, let's see. You were thinking the block was little squares and how did the quilt entire... Oh yeah, so this is like how you do the entire thing without stopping. So, you know, okay, so we'll start here and we'll go to this point and then we got to find the halfway point and we'll do a bloop to there and then, then we can find the half point on the other side and go down. It's kind of like a little mind... Um, maze and that's what I kind of that's the mystery of free motion quilting to me is just all these little mazes on how do you start in one spot and get back up to where you left off and uh, I'm excited to, to learn more about that okay so I'm gonna come right up at this this um, quarter inch mark away here I gotta pull up the thread still so there we are. Oops, did I put that down already? Yeah. There we go. There's our little brown thread underneath. Yeah, I'm thinking all of a sudden maybe I won't have enough bobbin thread for this, but we'll give it a go. Okay, press the foot down. All right. Let's get situated again. So it'll be kind of like, you know, we could, if I had the right presser foot, we could use the ruler for this. Like, you know, this is kind of the arc that we're going for, right? All right. So my hope with this is that I get better at these arcs as we, as we move up the quilt. Although I will be adding bulk. Um, so we'll just have to take, take our time. Okay. So first, an arc this way, and I want to end up kind of at this, this quarter inch mark again here. And I'm completely expecting these arcs <laughs> to
to be so bad at the beginning, which clearly we're off to the right start for that. Um, but that's, that's the practice, right? Okay, so I'm going to kind of aim in the middle. I'm kind of estimating. I'm eyeballing what the middle is on this. And, okay, I'm going to, I think it's right after these. Um, I'm just eyeballing it. So I think it's about right after these uh, first pearl circle here. All right, I definitely want to do a little bit bigger arcs than that, but we'll get at it. And then I'm aiming for the middle here, which is uh, about right at those pearl bracelet marks. All the way to the end. So they are going to be oddly shaped because we are working with V's, but I think that's kind of cool. All right, so now we kind of want to we want to go back up to this point. And my bobbin thread is still a little goofy. I'm tempted to take it out and put it back in. Uh, we'll just loosen it a little, see if that helps. All right, and then to the center, that's going to be our, our checkpoint. <laughs> see, so it's a little goofy. You come back this way then, and you get that final arc. So when we're done, we'll go doop, 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 but on this side all the way back. So this first route, though, we got to get these, these middle dudes as well. So that is what, yeah, they're a little, they're a little diamond shapey. We're working at it. Ooh, and that arc is bigger than I wanted, but that's okay. Oh my god, my tongue, it's so, I feel like a cartoon, like seriously, my tongue is completely out. So all right, I'm just kind of estimating, eyeballing, you could draw it, but like I'm eyeballing what's the center point and... I'm going right about there, like in the middle of this pink and this purple there. That's where my where I'm aiming right now. There we go. And now the halfway point here. Let's go about there. Just directly across, basically. Oops, crossed over a little bit. These are going to be what they're going to be. We're only one chevron in and we got a whole row yet to, to do better on this. But I think it's going to be super pretty and uh, I think I'm going to really like this one. Oh, we're starting with the bulk now. Pulling the bulk in the machine here. I'm going to just turn you guys a little bit more. Hopefully you can see a little bit better here. All right, those ones are the easy ones where I have like the clear lines. All right, there. Um, they're they're not gonna be leaves. They're gonna be they're gonna be like this. Um, let's see if I can get this in here. Where. When it's done, it's going to look like a square that's been completely blooped all the way around. It's going to look like that. I don't know if there's a good example, like a good drawing example of that in here. That's why I have it on that on this one page. But yeah, I don't I don't think we'll man, I'm not sure we'll get to it tonight. I'm kind of tempted to just uh if we get to the point where there's like um just a few minutes left, I might come down the other way <laughs> and just do it. All right, I got to find the center of this again, or estimate. We'll go right there. That's center enough. Okay. 
So I want to kind of show you guys what, what we're doing, you know, this loop on the other side. But oop, this is going to be a small one. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to, you know, ideally you do a whole row and then you come back, come back the other way. Ooh, shoot. I kind of started with the foot up weird. All right, here we go. And we're not going to be here tomorrow because uh, it's the 4th of July. And uh, on Thursday, we're going to be working on the Splendid Sampler 2. So I think if we just have a few minutes left, even if we're not done with this row, I think I will come back the other way just to show you guys since we won't be working on this again for a few days here. Definitely starting to feel feel the bulk again. This is still pretty much a middle row. Ooh, I can't pull it all the way that way. There we go. Just barely can get my hand in here. There's like no space at all. Get my fingers in there. So that bobbin issue seemed to resolve a little bit. Oh yeah, and I gotta stop in the middle and move my hand because of all the bulk. I think this is gonna be really kind of classy though. I, I, I'm excited for for this one. So we'll go on this for about I don't know eight more minutes, and then we'll we'll come back the other way. Oh, I'm just guessing on the centers now by feel, I suppose. This center is directly across, so I, I can kind of estimate that. There we are. Yes, Marie, I want to do that as well. I definitely want to do a feather motif by the time we're done with this quilt. So uh, we'll have to start thinking about that next week. Oh, that could be Nolene. So we might be in the area where it's really weird and thick on the back, and that could be part of the bobbin stuff. Or it's just my speed, or I just need to um, practice more. I don't know. But it, it seems like it's resolving itself a little bit. It's still there where the bobbin is kind of coming to the top, but I don't know, not enough that I'm going to deal with it tonight. By the time we work on this again, I'll have cleaned up the machine a little bit again and... I hope. So hopefully that issue goes away. I'm not really focusing on the arcs like I said I would. Ooh, we're almost out of top thread too, you guys. So uh, <laughs> I gotta keep my eye on, on that as well. That'll be kind of fun. We'll have to come back to this with a whole new top top thread color. I think I'm going to go and try and do one more V, and then we'll come back the other way and call it an evening. I just want to make sure I don't run out of top thread before we finish tonight. That's, that's where I'm at now. So this will be our last V.
I mean, I, I don't know, like I'm thinking about that westerly thing, getting that presser foot. I don't know how much ruler work I'll be doing. I mean, I do like the idea of using a ruler for straight lines. I think that's kind of cool. And I do like that it's that half inch circle and that I have the opportunity to use, um, use rulers with it. So versus buying a different presser foot that's like a perfect half inch around. So I don't know. I think I'm a low shank machine. So I'll have to, I'll have to look through that, measure that stuff as well. All right, this is it. I'm going to go up on this one and then we're going to come back around and then you guys could see, see what's, what the full, uh, full version of what I'm trying to do here is with this design. Oh man, that's going to be the worst arc of the day, I think. I am dealing with more bulk though now too. You know, like I was saying the other day, I kind of hit that 45 minute mark and then, uh, then <laughs> it kind of all goes downhill after that. We're kind of there. All right, so I'm going to come back down the other side now. Um, you can measure. So I would just do a Google search of um, high shank versus low shank and there something will come up where you can actually measure and it's it's something like if um, where your your screw is if it's like a half inch and lower or something like that then it's a low shank if it's a half inch or higher then it's a high shank it is something like that I'm not positive but it is just a measurement where you measure um, up from from the bottom so um, that's that's what you would do. There's also a slant shank too. I think uh, I think there's some older machines and um, some old singers and some of them are are slant shank, but not all of them. Uh, so you just have to. It's a measuring system. So uh, just Google low shank versus high shank sewing machine, and there'll be a whole thing that comes up on how to measure. But that's important because when you buy. Uh, presser feet, you're going to need to know if it's a high shank or low shank. All right, so we, we went up one way, and so now how you finish this, you know, pretend we went the whole entire way. We're going to just stop here for the night. Uh, but now to finish off this design, we come back down the other way, but we've, we've done this bloop already, so we only have to do the bottom bloops here. So, uh, you know, you'll see what I mean here. And... Uh, it's kind of like the finishing thing. See, now we got this weird diamond deal here. When you order the Westerly rulers, you tell them to make, oh, they're making the model of the machine so they send you the right one. Oh, that's good to know. They're most likely just going to make sure if you have a high or low shank. Um, so it's good to know, but yeah, that's... That's good to know that they, they make sure you get the right thing before they send it. So I'm just adding those bloops to the bottom here and that's finishing off finishing off our, our shapes here. Ooh wow, there's some stuff underneath there. There, so you can kind of see with, with this one here. Yeah, they are kind of like weird diamonds. I mean, normally you would do you could do this on like uh, squares. I'm doing it on a, like a weird shape, so they're going to end up weird. But on squares, they look really pretty. Um, but yeah, so we're just we're just finishing off these with the the bottom bloop. For some reason, I really wanted to try this with with uh, free motion quilting. It's just stuck in my head. <laughs> I think mostly because I. I would never have guessed that you'd go up one way and then come back the other way. That concept, I think, was the first time that I was really kind of discovering that concept. I think that's why I specifically wanted to try this design. But so many designs are like that, where you go up one way and come back the other way. That's, um, I want to play more with that as we keep going on this quilt. No one says we got to fill it all in the one way, the first way up. 
we can come back around. And I think that's what we'll have to do for feathers. Like, we'll, we'll, we could do, like, a nice swirly feather path and then come back and add all the, like, the, the little feathers to it. Ooh, these are, this has a mind of its own a little bit right now. I'm crossing over a bit, but that's okay. Oh yeah, this would be awesome for a jelly roll quilt. Where it's just a bunch of like straight lines. All right, there, we're, we're ending this guy here. So, all right, let's take a look at that. I wanna show you guys how that turned out. Machine is nice and warm. It's, it's worked hard today. Gotta cut that bobbin thread yet. I'm guessing we don't have much of that bobbin thread left. Okay, so here is, I know it is called something. Uh, I'll have to look it up uh, what, what this, um, where'd it go? Oh, here we are. But here we go. So you can kind of see, you get these full kind of leaves, but all the way around. Let's get up a little closer there. So again, and I am, you know, I'm, I'm angled on these chevrons, but on just a square, it would be really pretty. See, like this. Now imagine my arcs are nice and pretty. This would look just like awfully sweet, I think. And it really fills in the space fast, um, you know, and like I said, I, I'm trying to practice arcs. Clearly I have a ways to go, but how fun. I like this one. This is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. And look at, you know, if you get it just right, this arc continues and then it looks just like a circle here a little bit. You know what I mean? So in theory, uh, this is the one that if you do on squares, you get like a full circle when you're done and it looks so cool. Uh, you know, it's looking a little different here just because we are at a weird, a weird angle. But in theory, um, this could give you a whole circle. Oh yeah, the back too. Yeah, the back, um, you should really be able to see it. Oh, it looks so good on the back. Oh, I love it. Um, especially going right to the edge here. But here, you know, this is pretty like a poor example, but you get like that arc um, that if I could continue this just right, it would be really pretty. Oh, I love the back. Oh, see, so we were going through. <laughs> we're going through some, some chunky stuff for a little while. How far did we go up here? I don't think we quite made it halfway. Oh, it's still going. It's still going. We, we did make it pretty far. Yeah, we, we got to here. Oh, yeah. So we're, we are really chunking through here. Um, so <laughs> that could have been some bobbin stuff, but I think it's, it's looking super cool. Uh, so I, I, used, I used brown, but I thought the brown was pretty close to, to the red. We're getting further and further away from, from the red because um, we've been running out. But, oh, man, the back is looking fun. So we will, um, I want to see if we can find some of that other stuff that we did today. Oh, it's down at the other end. But uh, we'll pick this up again on, let's see, on Monday. So we won't be working on this again till next week, Monday, and we'll continue with, with these uh, circle bloopy leafy guys on Monday. So we, I won't be here tomorrow. Here, I'm going to flip you guys around, and then we'll talk about schedule here. Hello, hello. Uh, so we won't be here tomorrow because it's the it's Independence Day, 4th of July here. And uh, then on Thursday, I'll be back. And Thursday, we'll be working on the next Splendid Sampler 2 block. I believe there's one released this week. I don't think... I don't think there wasn't one for the holiday. So on Thursday, we'll do that. And then Friday, I'm going to be off as well because it's my birthday and we're going to a play in town here for my birthday. So I won't be here Friday. So back on Monday, we'll be here quilting on on this. And we are, we have like 
four and a half more rows of this to, to go, and then we're going to be doing a binding. So, man, wrapping up a project almost already. So I will um, be sending it out, out an email soon to what our next projects will be so we can prep for that. Uh, I'm still kind of working on getting that together, uh, but I will uh, get that out soon. Uh, so make sure you're on my newsletter just by going to my website or blog. Um, or the free pattern. I have a link for a free pattern here in the Facebook post. Uh, if you click on that, that will get you on to the newsletter as well, and you'll get a free pattern too. Uh, all right, guys, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and uh, thanks for hanging out with me again tonight. It's so fun. I love when you guys are sewing and doing stuff, even if you're just folding laundry or whatever. That's that's getting something done. I like it. <laughs> so uh, I will see you guys back again here on Thursday. Have a great holiday tomorrow. Good night.